Hi everyone, I'm Celine from Blue Cala Patterns and welcome to video two for the Sage booklet. The first thing we're going to do is prepare the body binding and that's the binding that we see all the way around here and all the way around here. So you probably have, like me, a bunch of uh, binding strips that were cut on the bias and we need to make uh, a total of 104 inches of bias binding or two pieces that are 52 inches long. So in order to do this we do have to uh, sew together some of these strips to make the 52 inch long pieces. So when you're um, sewing pieces together, so you want to get two pieces that are like this and then you just place them one on top of the other, right sides together, and you want to leave a little triangle of fabric at the ends, and you're going to be sewing inside the little, the little V, the bottom of the V here, and the bottom of the V here, with one quarter inch seam allowance all the way across, and I like to backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so I have two uh, sections of uh, bias binding. They're probably a bit longer than 52 inches, but that's okay. I'd rather have some extra. Now, in the instructions, I tell you to fold this in half all the entire length, wrong sides together, and press. Just uh, pressing some of the creases out for now. Now, you especially want to press the seam flat where you attached the pieces together. Now you can, um, if you want, you can skip the step of folding it in half and pressing because it'll be a little bit more forgiving if you don't, but um, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. So you just do this for both pieces. You're just folding them in half, wrong sides together, along the entire length and then pressing. And once both pieces are pressed, you can just set them aside for now. We're going to use them a little bit later in the assembly. Okay, so the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the four fabric pieces that we cut using the vinyl pouch binding pattern piece. You should have cut four pieces, and we're going to make four pieces of double fold binding that look like this. So to do that, you're going to take one of the pieces, fold it in half, wrong sides together along the entire length, and press. And then you open that up to reveal that center crease we just made and fold in each half so that the edge meets the crease at the center and press that. So you're folding in wrong sides together again. So first the top half, then the bottom half. Like this. And then we fold in half again along that original crease and press. And you repeat that for all four pieces until you have four pieces of double fold binding. Okay, so we have our four pieces of double fold binding and now you're going to need your four pieces of clear vinyl. Uh, you would have cut those with the vinyl window pattern piece. And if your vinyl has a clear plastic uh, cover, or I'm not sure what you would call it, sometimes there's a layer of clear plastic to protect it, uh, you'll want to take that off. I think I just had the one. Nope, two. Okay, get rid of that.
Okay, so now you're going to need to use clips. Do not use pins when you're working with vinyl, whether it be clear vinyl or faux leather. You never want to use pins. You always want to use clips because holes are permanent. And you want to open up a piece of double fold binding and insert the top straight edge of the vinyl so that the top straight edge is touching the crease here at the top. And hold it in place with some clips. Okay, and then you're going to sew the binding to the vinyl along this bottom edge here and use a longer stitch length. I use a stitch length of three and a half or four. And then you're going to do the same thing for the remaining three pieces of binding and the three remaining pieces of clear vinyl. Okay, so I've sewn the binding to the four pieces of vinyl, and now you're going to need your four zippers. And we're going to sew the binding pieces here to the zippers. Now, one thing that is important to remember here is that you see the uh, zipper pulls open a certain direction. So this one's going to open at this end. Okay, so the rounded side of your pull, that's where the zipper opening is going to be. I would like to have two of these opening, when sewn to the vinyl, opening to the right and two of them opening to the left. And this is why. So this is the center of the booklet and you'll see both of the pulls are at the top. But if you look at this in this direction, so if we're looking at the vinyl in this direction, this pull is opening to the left. If I look at this piece of vinyl, same direction, but the pull opens to the right. So I want the two vinyl pockets at the center to have the pulls both at the top. But in order to do that, I need to attach the zippers to the vinyl, one in each direction. Um, so I'm going to attach this one to this zipper and the pull opens here to the left. So this will be the opening. And then for this one, I'm going to attach this, but this pull here is opening to the right. Okay. And then I have to do the same thing with my two remaining pieces and my zippers with the star poles. I'm going to install one of them with the pull opening to the left and one of them with the pull opening to the right. Now, this step here, I find it really difficult to pin or clip so I will just try to maintain a, a consistent distance between the top edge of the binding here and the zipper coil, this bottom edge of the zipper coil. So that's really what is key in this step, is to maintain the same distance. And you're going to have to push your pull, your zipper pull over to, so you should never sew beside the zipper pull here because it creates a little curve in the coil and then your, your spacing won't be consistent in that area. So as you're doing this step, you're going to push that pull out of the way. So I'm just kind of setting the distance that I want with one clip at each end. And then I'm just going to be constantly adjusting the position of my zipper so that the, this distance here remains the same the entire length. So now I'm going to go over to the machine. I'm going to be sewing the top edge of the binding here this time to the zipper.
Okay, so now you're going to need the four pouch body lining pieces that you selected to be uh, behind the uh, behind the vinyl windows. So I'm going to start with these first. So I know that I want these to be like this. So these are going to be the back and the front cover. I'll show you that here. So one is going to be here and the other one's going to be there. Now I know that these are going to be facing the owl. So there's going to be one owl here and then one owl there. And so I'm going to use the moon and star poles because there's moons and stars here on the owls. So I thought that would look nice together. So I'm going to place one and pay attention to the direction that your pull opens. So this one's going to be along the back cover. So it's going to open this way towards the top. And this one is going to be the front cover and the pull is opening up towards the top. So that's why we were paying attention to the direction that the, uh, the zipper pulls were opening. Okay, so I'm just going to use the one piece here to show you what you're going to do. You're going to do the same for this one and the other one. So you're lining up the rounded corners of the vinyl with the rounded corners of the lining piece and use clips to hold that in place. And then you're just going to baste all of this to the lining piece all the way around with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, if you're finding it, your foot is sticking on this vinyl, just do this step with the vinyl facing down and then your feed dogs of your machine will be grabbing it and you should be okay to sew it. So just going all the way around like this with one eighth of an inch seam allowance and you're just using a basting stitch. Okay, so I have the vinyl basted to all of the four pouch body lining pieces. Now I'm just going to take one of these and I'm going to show you what to do with one set and then you can do the same thing with the rest. Then you're going to need your four uh, vinyl pouch upper panel pieces. So these are four fabric pieces that are interfaced. Just take one of them. And we're going to be sewing it to the top edge of the uh, the zipper. So you're going to place it here. Now your zipper might be a little bit crooked, it might have shifted. So the way to make sure that you're sewing this piece on straight is to make sure that these edges here are aligned. And you want the edge here to be aligned with the top edge of the zipper. Now you could use pins in this step. I don't have any, I don't think. Actually, yes I do. So I'm going to be moving the pull out of the way when I sew this step. So my pull is right here at the moment. Uh, just because again, it does move the, uh, the zipper tape over and then you won't be sewing to the zipper straight. So I'm gonna sew across here with one quarter inch seam allowance from this edge, this top edge of the zipper and making sure that I backstitch uh, at the beginning and the end. Okay, so this is sewn to the top edge here. And what we're going to do is we are going to press that away from the zipper. And then we're going to top stitch this edge here, uh, one, eighth, one eighth of an inch away from the zipper.
Okay, the seam allowance here has been top stitch, and then what you're going to do, and I've already done it here, is you're going to flip this over, and then I just want you to baste here together. So you'll see that the uh, vinyl pouch upper panel is a little bit bigger, so I just trim it to match the top edge of the pouch, bo pouch body lining piece. That was difficult to say. And then you can also trim the excess zipper at this step. Okay, and then you're just basting here so that these edges just stay together. So this is what it should look like. May I sewed this on a little bit crooked, but it won't matter. That's going to be hidden in the final uh, binding. So that's what this looks like. Now you're going to repeat exactly the same steps that we just did to sew the remaining vinyl pouch upper panels to the three remaining uh, vinyl pouches. Okay, so now I have all four vinyl pouches completed. Just going to set those aside for now. And now you're going to need your two pouch body exterior pieces and we're going to sew them together along the center straight line. So you're going to place them so they are right sides together. And then pin them here. And then sew them together along this edge with our typical seam allowance of 3 8 of an inch. And make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end. And so now these two pieces are sewn together and we're going to press the seam allowance open. And then if you want, you can top stitch the seam allowance um, along both sides of the seam. That's optional. You don't have to if you don't want to. Some people don't. Okay, I've gone ahead and top stitched the seam allowance. So we're going to set that aside for now. Okay, so now we're going to create our tab closure. You're going to need the pattern piece, and you're going to want to punch out uh, the little magnetic snap mark here. So just punch it out. I just use a pen to punch it out like this. Uh, and then you'll also need your 18 millimeter magnetic snap. So first thing I'm going to do, this is the the this is going to be the underside of my tab closure. That's where I'm going to be installing my uh, magnetic snap. So you just place the pattern piece over top and transfer the location of the magnetic snap to the right side of the tab. Like this. And then you're going to need the washer from your magnetic snap. So that's what your washer looks like. And you're going to place it with the hole centered over the mark that you just made. So you, there, my mark is right there in the center. And I'm just going to mark the location of the prongs on either side of that. Now, normally I would use a seam ripper to cut out the uh, prong holes. However, I cannot seem to find one of my 10 million seam rippers anywhere in my studio. So I'm going to do the little cut with my rotary cutter, which I don't normally do, but I cannot find a seam ripper. Thankfully, I did have my fray check, so add a bit of fray check in each of the holes that you just made, and the hole is clogged. There and there. And then you're going to take the male half of your snap. So there's always two parts to a snap. There is the male half and the female half. Okay, so there's your male half and there's the female half. I always put the male half in a flap or a tab and I always put the female half in the body of the bag. That's just how I do it. So I have the male half here 
and you're going to insert the prongs into the, pr the holes, the prong holes that you just made. Now, if you really want to stabilize this even further, you could add a scrap of Peltex or something like that uh, over the prongs before you insert your washer. Of course, I don't think I have any. Of course, I don't have any Peltex anywhere, so I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, add your washer and spread your prongs. And then, I like to fuse a scrap of interfacing over top. You can also put tape. I've seen that done many times. Uh, but I have a small scrap of my heavyweight woven, so I'm actually just going to fuse that over top. Now the reason why we do something like this is to prevent the prongs from tearing into the other fabric. Put a little bit too much here, it's in the seam allowance. Okay, so that's what that looks like now. So we can place these right sides together. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Now we need the end here to be finished, not raw edges. Normally I would I turn a tab closure through the bottom straight edge, but this one here, we need it to have finished sides all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave an opening here for turning the tab right side out, and I'm going to sew the rest of the way all the way around. And make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end of that seam. So we're just going to start here. So backstitch. So all the way around. Stop and rotate. Turn here. And then when we stop here, we're going to backstitch again. Now when you're sewing around the curved end here, take your time so that you do a nice smooth curve. Okay, so I've sewn all the way around the tab closure, and then if you noticed, I did some basting stitches here at the opening. And the reason why I do that is so that I can press the edges like this at that opening. And then when I sew, sew it shut in the next step, it makes it easier for me to do a nice straight line in that area. It'll become more clear after I turned it. So I just press it open that way. Now I'm going to trim the seam allowance everywhere else. Like this. And you especially want to do the corners properly so that they're nice and uh, have nice sharp points when you turn it. And then do not trim the seam allowance at the opening. You don't, you leave that part untrimmed. Oh, and of course I don't have a seam ripper. So I'm gonna have to do this this way, which I don't normally recommend. So now I'm removing those basting stitches. They're pretty easy to remove. Okay, all right, so here we go. I've taken out the basting stitches. Now I'm going to turn it right side out through this opening.
Now, normally I have a chopstick that I use, but of course I've forgotten that. I have two spaces, so I have a space where I film, but I don't normally sew. So I don't have everything that I need in my filming space, which is also where I fill my orders. Um, so everything is upstairs in my actual sewing space. So I always forget to bring things down. Okay, so I just like to roll the seam in between my fingers. And I definitely need something sharper to poke out my corners, but I have nothing. Okay, looks like this is as good as I'm going to get it. So you remember we did that basting stitch here along the opening, and then we press that open. So now it gives us a little bit of a crease, and we know that we just need to match up those creases when we're sewing this shut. We're going to sew it shut when we do our top stitching. And the goal here is to get a nice straight edge. So this is going to be the top view of my tab. I've created a little pucker here. Now, when you're going to top stitch, if you want, you can use a clip to leave these nicely aligned. So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch all the way around, uh, making sure that I'm sewing uh, both of these folded edges to close that opening. Of course, I forgot to hit record while I was top stitching, but this is what it looks like when I'm done. I just went really slowly around the curved corner here, and I kept my needle in the down position when I rotated at the corners so that I rotated nice sharp corners. Sorry. Now we're going to sew the uh, finished tab to the exterior of the booklet. Now this is going to be the front of the booklet and this is going to be the back of the booklet. So what I want to do is I want to find the center along this edge. So it's 10, so five inches is the center. I should know that by heart, but I did not. Then I also want to find the center along this edge here. This one here I will go ahead and just fold that like this. Okay, so that's my center here. Okay, so now I'm going to place this like this. Actually, I'll do it up higher like this so you can see better. And I want to sew the tab to the exterior. So I need this edge here of the tab to be placed two and one quarter inches from this edge. I don't have a smaller ruler, but I do have a clear ruler that is way too large, but here it is. So what I want to do is I want to make a mark two and a quarter inches in from this edge, but also I want it at that five inch uh, center mark that I just made. So that would be right here. So I just made like a little T-shaped mark. This is a, a pen that uh, it, the marks disappear with heat. So I want to have this edge just in front of this line and the center marks aligned as well. And then I can use my mat here just to make sure that the tab is also uh, straight this in this direction. And I'm going to use pins here to keep that in place. Like so. Now if you want to make sure that it is perfectly straight, you can make sure that the top and the bottom edge of the tab is two quarter inches, two and one quarter inches in from the the edge here. So that's good. That's good. Okay, so that's nice and straight. 
So now you're going to sew the tab closure to the exterior, but you're going to make sure that you're uh, sewing not too close to the edge here. So you're going to follow the top stitch stitching here, and then you're going to sew a rectangle shape. And I don't want it to be too wide because it will interfere with the, the binding uh, in a future step. So I'm going to make a mark one and a quarter inches away from this straight edge on the tab. And that's where I'm going to stop sewing the box. So I'm following the stitching here, here, and then when I get to that mark, I stop and I rotate and I sew across and then come back around and back stitch. Okay, so the tab is sewn on. Now we're going to install the other half of our magnetic snap, which means we're going to need the other washer and the female half of our snap. So we're going to measure again like we did last time to find the center. So we know that it is 5 inches because this is 10 inches. And we, this time we want to make a mark 1.5 inches from this edge. So we're going to go like this. And that's, there's our mark right here. And then I lost my washer. There it is. So I'm placing the, this is the same, same method that we use to install the snap on the tab. You just put the, mark in the center hole of the washer and then mark the location of the prongs on either side and then cut those out apply some fray check And then insert the prongs of your snap through those holes, flip it over, and then place the washer over the prongs and then spread those prongs. And then again, I'm going to put a scrap of interfacing over top of the prongs. If you have tape, you can use tape instead. Okay. Okay, so that's it's going to look like this when it's closed. So now we're going to need two of our vinyl pouches. Uh, and I decided to use these, if you remember. And I'm going to also remember that I want I'm going to want my poles at the top here when the pouches are closed. So now I'm going to sew these together along the straight edge. So ignore this. You're just clipping these two edges together. And then you're going to sew them together with our usual 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then press that seam open. Okay, so I'm going to go over and sew this at the machine. Okay, so these are sewn together. Both of my pulls are going to be at the top. And then I just want to press this seam open. You can press from this side as well. Just make sure you don't touch your vinyl. It will melt. That was very steamy. OK. 
Okay, so that's what that looks like now. So now you're going to take your exterior and place it on top of your work surface like this. So you want your tab to be over here. And then you're going to take these two pieces and place them over top. Don't worry about it if they don't line up perfectly. We're going to trim the edges to match later, so don't worry too much about that. Just have the seams here lined up and pin those first, or clip rather. I just prefer not to use pins at all since we're working with vinyl. So I've lined these two up, then I'm going to bring these up and line these two up next and clip. Then I'm going to clip all the way around. Okay, so now that these are all clipped around the edges, they're all clipped together, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to base them together with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around. But we are going to leave an opening at the bottom because before we close this off, we're going to insert some of our uh, booklet firm interfacing pieces. So that's the two Peltex pieces. We're going to insert two of them in here before we sew it shut all the way. So I'm going to, I'm just going to do a quick basting stitch almost all the way around, leaving an opening here along the bottom. Now, one important thing that I did forget to mention that you should have the tab out of your way so you're not including that in that basting stitch. Okay, so now I can remove this clip and now I do have this opening at the bottom. So I'm going to insert one of these into each half. So this one's gonna go on this side. And yes, they are floating around for now, but you'll see in one of the last steps, we're going to be sewing here, and that's going to be keeping them uh, towards the outer edges where they're supposed to be. Okay, so now those are inside. I'm just going to finish sewing along that bottom edge to close that opening. Okay, so that's what this looks like at this point. Now what I would like you to do is to just tr trim any unevenness. So there might be a little bit of vinyl sticking out at one side. There might be, you know, uneven fabric. So now we're just going to go around and trim it so that it's all nice and even around the edges. Now for the part that everyone dreads, we're going to add our body binding to these two layers all the way around. So you'll need one of your pieces of body binding. And I'm going to explain this part at the machine. What I'm just going to start by doing is cutting one straight edge of the binding and you're going to leave it folded in half like you, we folded and pressed it in the beginning. And we're going to be starting with this part of the bag facing up. Like the whole time, I need you to keep the, uh, the tab closure out of the way because it's not going to be a part of the, the body binding at all. Okay, so I've got the booklet underneath the foot of the machine and it's the vinyl pouch side up. Then I'm going to take the end of the binding that I just straightened. I just trimmed it. And we're going to place it there and we're not going to start sewing right at the very end of the binding piece. We're going to start about an inch from the end and we're going to be sewing the binding to the, the, the booklet with one quarter inch seam allowance and definitely keep your needle in the down position just so that you're not losing your, your placement as you're sewing. And I'm going to 
I just explained as I'm going along. So it, this is the raw edges of the binding, just in case it's not clear on the camera. So take your time at the corners, and if you need to lift the presser foot and readjust your layers, then stop that, stop sewing and do that. Now, when I get to the other end, I'm going to pause and I'm just going to cut this much of the binding. So you do have an overlap. And then with the part that you just cut, you fold it in about half an inch. Like this. And then... Now you can do this the other way, it's probably easier actually, where you press the end that you started half an inch in, but it looks like I've decided to make this difficult on myself. Okay, and then you just tuck this inside so there's no raw edges here. Make sure that it's nice and snug. You don't want it to be loose. And then you just finish sewing when you're happy with it. Okay, so now that the binding has been sewn on to the Inside, we're going to flip the binding over towards the exterior and use clips to hold it in place. So you're going to do that along the entire edge. And then just make sure that you turn it around and have a look. That make sure that you're happy with what it looks like on the other side. Okay, so it's all clipped. I'm just going to turn it over and have a look. Make sure I'm happy with what it looks like. Sometimes there can be a little bit of puckering at the uh, rounded corners. So I like to fix that before I start sewing on the binding. Sometimes it helps to use extra clips at those rounded corners. Okay, so when we sew on the binding, I usually sew from this side. And you can, it's up to you where you want to sew it on. You can sew it on the very edge here, the inside edge of the binding, if you wish. Uh, but I like to stitch in the ditch, so really right here in this in the seam where we first sewed on the binding. That's usually where I try to, to sew. 
Uh, but sometimes if you didn't do a very good job with um, your seam allowance and everything, there might not be enough binding to get caught in that stitching, in which case it's better for you to sew on the inside edge here of the, uh, the actual binding itself. So I'm going to go over to the machine and sew this on and you sew with this side facing up. Okay, so this is what it looks like now, the inside and the outside. So we're going to set this aside for now. Now you're going to take the two remaining vinyl pouches and you're going to trim off half an inch from this top straight edge. And because I want them to be exactly the same size, I'm going to lay them one on top of the other Actually, I might put them together so they don't move. And now I'm going to trim off half an inch from the top. So I want them to be the same height. So I'm just using the grid here because I might have been not exact with my seam allowance for the zipper. Okay, so this top was really crooked. So Okay, so now I can set these aside for now. Now we're going to be making our mesh pockets. So you'll need the two lining pieces that will be behind the mesh pockets. And the two pieces of mesh. Just put these here for now. And then you're also going to need your uh, double, your fold over elastic. Um, so I want to cut this piece of fold over elastic in half. Now, uh, my fold over elastic is white, so I'm going to thread the machine with white thread because I don't want a contrasting thread on the fold over elastic. Okay, so the shiny side of the fold over elastic is the right side. You're going to, and you'll need some clips. You're going to place this in here. So you want the edge of the mesh to meet the center and then you just fold it over and use a clip to hold it in place and you do that the entire length. So I'm not going to clip the entire length because they are both stretchy and I find I end up having to remove the clips to make adjustments anyways. So I'm going to just bring it over to the machine and fold and sew as I go. Uh, if you have a, a zigzag stitch, it's better to sew this on with a zigzag stitch. Unfortunately, I don't have a zigzag stitch, so I'm just going to use a, uh, a straight stitch with a longer stitch length.
Okay, so now we're going to need our lining pieces. And actually, I should have them this way. So the taller edge of the mesh is going to be along the straight edge. And you can use pins in this step or clips, whatever you have, and just clip this in place. And then we're just going to base them to the lining pieces. So don't worry if the mesh piece goes a little bit outside of the edges, that's fine. Okay, so I'm just going to base that in place around these three sides. Okay, so there's one done, and I'm going to do the same for this one. Okay, now I'm going to just trim any excess. Okay, so now we're going to sew these together along the, the straight edges but you're not going to use 3 8 of an inch seam allowance you're going to use half an inch okay so half an inch seam allowance make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the end Okay, um, now we can press the seam allowance open. Okay, and now you're going to take these two lining pieces, sorry, the vinyl pouch pieces. I'm going to flip this over so it's wrong side facing up. And now you want to make sure that you're placing these over top with the pulls opening at the top. Okay, so you're just going to... And you want the center raw edges of these vinyl pouches to be somewhat lined up here. It's It doesn't matter too much if they're a little bit different. Don't worry about that too much. We're going to be covering the center with um, the booklet spine piece. So it allows us to not be exactly, exactly precise here in the middle. It won't make a difference in the end. Okay, and, and this one, again, you're making sure your pulls are at the top. Okay, so now we're going to base the vinyl pouches to the mesh pockets.
Okay, so this is what it looks like now. And as you can see, we have an opening here, which is perfect for inserting the two remaining booklet firm interfacing pieces. And make sure that they're going all the way to the ends. Okay, so set this aside for just a minute and grab your booklet spine piece. And we're going to fold this in half, wrong sides together. And you can open it up. And then you're folding in each half towards that center crease. Wrong sides together and press it again. My urn has reached that stage of life where it drips water all the time. Okay, and then the second half towards the center crease, wrong sides together. Ugh. The amount of steam coming out of this iron is ridiculous. Try this again without scalding myself. Okay, and then I like to press it again from this side just to make sure that crease in the center has disappeared. Okay, that's what this looks like now. Okay, so now you'll need these pieces again. And you're going to place the booklet spine over the middle. So make sure that you're flattening that seam allowance from the mesh pocket pieces because they do tend to stick up a little, I noticed. And then you want to line up the center here of the booklet spine with the seam in the middle here. And use one clip. And then do the same for this side. So my booklet spine, I didn't do a good job cutting it because it is apparently too long. And center that as well. Don't worry about it if yours is also too long because it will be trimmed. And just to be extra cautious, I'm going to also pin here. I don't have any vinyl in this area, so I can go ahead and use some pins. Okay, now make sure that inside here that your your Peltex pieces are away from this seam. You don't want you want them to be in the ends here. You don't want it to be in the seams we're about to sew. Okay, so now we're going to sew the booklet spine in place along these two longer sides with one eighth of an in inch seam allowance. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim excess booklet spine from the ends. Okay, and now this is what the interior looks like. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole binding process again, but you're going to bind this portion exactly like you did for this part. So I'm going to repeat exactly the same steps that I did when I sewed the binding to the exterior. Okay, so I finished the binding on this part. Now we're at the very last step. You're going to place the interior portion over top of the exterior 
and you want to line up the center of the booklet spine with the seam from this portion right here. And just put a clip there to hold that in place. And then flip it around. And you'll want to do the same over here. Just use a clip. Just make sure I've got that. I'm sort of just eyeballing it, but if you're you like to be more precise, you can actually measure, which is probably a very good idea. Okay, so what's important in this step is we're going to be sewing through all of the layers. Now, one thing to make sure is that uh, you remember we put in that uh, the booklet firm interfacing in here. So you want to make sure that it's nowhere near the center. Make sure that they're not anywhere near here so that we don't sew them into this next seam. And you're going to sew along the outer edges of the booklet spine and then across here under just at the bottom edge here of the uh, binding and then again all along this side of the booklet spine and then across again here at the bottom of the binding. Please be aware that whatever is your bobbin thread is going to show on the exterior of your bag. So you might want to change that thread to make sure that it matches with your exterior fabric. I'm going to go ahead and use the same color I did for the top stitching on both sides of this seam so that they're the same color. I've sewn the spine and now our booklet is done. This is what it looks like on the back. Your mesh pockets. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you get a lot of use out of your Sage booklet.